In this video, you're going to learn how to use the Jax Lex scan function. For this, we will look at the example of unrolling a physics time stepper to produce a trajectory. What you would commonly have is that you might have a function that advances your state and time. Here in this example, I have something that advances the state for the fourth order kuramoto siwashinsky equation, but this can be the Burgers equation or it can be any kind of dynamics you have. And then a typical pattern that you find when you produce trajectories is that you start at an initial condition, create a list to which you append the states after calling the stepper function. And then you also have some carry, so the current state that is carried in between the loops. And ultimately, you probably will stack the elements in the list together to get one long array, which has an additional axis, which might be the unrolling time axis, so the number of time steps you've done. Then usually if you have a 1D problem like here, you can then visualize the spatial temporal plot. And JAXLAX scan is a function that is designed for those kind of tasks. It is helpful because it avoids the Python for loop. Usually when it comes to looping or in general control flow, this is where Python gets slow. And if you can avoid that and move this control flow into the deep learning library, you get a lot of performance advantages. So let's take a look at JAXLAX scan. For this, first I want to investigate the documentation. So Jax likes scan, and then let's hover over it. So what does it say? It says scan a function over leading array axes while carrying a long state. That's quite a mouthful. So let's look at the signature. It requires us to hand over a function which takes two arguments and produces two results. So it takes a carry, produces a new carry, and then it also takes some x here and produces a y. Then we need to hand over an init that could be something like the initial condition. And then we provide an X. So this is a plural here. This is related to that. And then we can define the length and some other commands that are not relevant for us right now. I like to think of JAXLAX scan as something that is very typical in dynamics. So we need to hand over a scan function, which takes a state and some force, or you might also say some control, and then produces a new state and an observation. So state is clear. So when we look at the original loop, this u current defines the state. So that's the value of the KS equation, the state of the system. Then the advancing in time is also clear. That's what the KS stepper function does. By the way, if you're interested in the details of how the stepper works, I have a video linked up here where we will implement that with a pseudo spectral ETD solver, but that's not the topic of this video. So let's go back down. So we take the state to the new state. That's already what we have. So missing a T here. But we could also have a system which is driven externally, either by some forcing term or by us being able to control it. So it's very typical what you find in optimal control or in general control theory that you have a state X as well as a control U and then you produce a new state X as well as an observation Y. So this does not fully match the naming that Jax uses, but this is usually what I was taught in my undergrad. And then we have this observation. So this is also denoted as Y. And this observation will be stacked. And that's crucial because ultimately we want to produce the trajectory, which is given by all the time frames stacked together and then created one long array. So Jax like scan not only does the loop for us, but also the stacking in the end. And here we will use a shortcut, which in optimal control, you might call something like full observability so that the observation is the state. So we observe the full state or in other words, we will just stack X or stack the new state. So far for this theory, let's implement this scan function. So let's create a new one. So we need this kind of helper function because we need to wrap this KS stepper or your um, autonomous time stepper. And so this is very in the spirit of how Jax handles that with function transformations. So we just create a new function. So this one takes a state, let's call it U and a force. But since here in this KS example, we don't have force, we can leave that empty and I will just add a placeholder here. Then it applies the KS stepper function. So our integrator to the U state and produces the next state. And then we return that as the carry because we will need it in the next loop to advance then to the state thereafter. But we also want to stack it. And so we will also return it here. So then 
we can call Jax flex scan and provide the scan function. We need to provide an init. This is the initial condition, so u0. Then we need to provide axis. So these are the forcing terms or the forcing trajectory to be precise. But we don't want to use that, so we will just use none to have something which is not driven or not forced. And then we will set the length to the number of time steps that we want to perform. And this is 2000 to be in accordance with what we've already done here in the Python for loop. Okay, so what does this return? So it says it returns a tuple of the carry as well as y. So it will return the final carry, which will be the final state. And then it also returns the trajectory. So we will just override the name that I've already chosen here. And the final state can be useful if we want that, but here we are mostly interested in the trajectory. So let's execute that function and it runs. And then we can visualize it. And for this, I will just copy the plotting call down here. And if we then compare this, so for instance, look at um, this area in the bottom right of the plot, you see that this is identical with the plot up here. So it produces the same trajectory. So internally, conceptually, the same computation happens, but without the Python for loop, way more efficiently with Jax code. The only difference is that we see here, essentially we have a trajectory with 2001 steps because we included the initial condition, whereas here we only have a trajectory with 2000 steps, which is excluding the initial condition. Tune in for the next video where we will write a general function transformation that takes usage of JAXLEX scan in order to conveniently wrap a creation for a trajectory. This channel is supported by Pasteur Labs and the Institute for Simulation Intelligence. Click the link in the video description to find out more how they merge machine learning and simulation in order to reimagine the scientific method. Also, a big thanks to all my Patreons. If you also want to support my vision of free education on advanced mathematical topics, you find the link to the Patreon page down in the video description. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, then please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel. There is more awesome content on Jax. Here you will now see similar videos and I hope to see you in one of the next videos.